it's Ivy Slater, and you're listening to Her Success Story Podcast, a show where gutsy businesswomen share their success journey. Hi, this is Ivy Slater, and welcome to today's episode of Her Success Story. For those of you who are just tuning in, we have been in a dynamic series of women leaders in cybersecurity. Um, if you continue to listen to this, go back and listen to a few. We have women from all different dimensions I have introduced to you. Anne-Marie McAvoy. She's a nationally recognized expert in financial crimes, including anti-money laundering, sanctions, cryptocurrency, anti-bribery, corruption compliance, internal investigations, fraud detection, and crisis management. Her broad back background gives her unique expertise, expertise, obviously. Having been a federal and state prosecutor in all and, and, and an in-house attorney at major global financial institutions, and having worked at a big four accounting firm, I'm telling you, we want to hear about Emory's background. Um, she's called upon as a media consultant um, and teaches classes on financial crimes as well as at Columbia's Graduate School of International and Public Affairs that addresses issues including AML and sanctions, compliance programs, human trafficking, transactional organized crime. She also handles extraditions, criminal cases, and a variety of other things. Amory is a fascinating woman, and I will tell you, listeners, having had the chance to just have coffee and conversation. She's a warm and delightful guest. Emory, thank you for joining me here today. Well, thank you, Ivy. I really appreciate it. Thank you for those kind words as well. <laughs> so, you know, on the, um, the, the obvious first question is, how in the world did you get into this? <laughs> this, you know, this is a specific niche market and this lends to cybersecurity. And when you had explained it to me, I just remember leaning in. And although we were on Zoom, I was like, OK, I mean, your face is getting a little close to the camera. I'm so fascinated. So mm -hmm. give me a little bit of that background. Well, I um, I'd always been involved um, in one way or another with um, issues that involve criminal activity, whether protecting victims, trying to help victims, or actually prosecuting the criminals. Um, and, and in the compliance area as well, you're usually working on trying to um, help law enforcement, essentially, trying to find information that might help them get um, bad guys out of the financial um, arena and protect people who are actually invested or, or uh, doing transactions um, of a financial nature. So um, so I've always been involved in, in that sphere one way or another. So then I uh, came across some folks who were working in the cyber area, which, which is often, it runs very closely with the financial crimes and compliance area. And, um, and today, as we get more into the crypto sphere, you wind up having even more of a connection between cyber and crime and um, financial transactions. Um, and so I started working a little bit in the crypto field first and then came across some folks who were working in the cyber area. And we decided, we, we came up with some things that we could do together and um, some offerings. And these folks are, I don't have the technical background, but um, I have the, the overview um, role and kind of the, the ability to see it from a what we can do to help people, what we can do to help law enforcement. So, um, so we started working together. So, you know, in business today, um, you're, you're looking at a global level of inter international um, crimes. And when we look at cybersecurity, we're from what I'm, I'm learning and, and listeners. So you guys, if you haven't heard my introduction to this, I said, I wanted to do this series. It might be for you, but it was so much for me because I'm so curious. I'm interested. I want to understand. Um, so we're, we're looking at protecting our businesses. We're looking at protecting our personal um, wealth, our, our, our futures. What do, you know, what are you seeing out there um, 
that the average layman, small business, you know, consumer, um, you know, and remember, listeners, small business is business under 10 million. What, what do we need to know out there and how can we protect ourselves from stuff we can't even see? Mm-hmm. Well, you have to be careful. And some of the things are very simple. Um, making sure you change your passwords once in a while, making sure you pick passwords that aren't too obvious, um, being careful what you click on, whether it be a website um, or an email. Um, a lot of the ransomware attacks start with somebody who opens up an email that was just phishing, basically, see if they could get you to take a look and then get into your system that way. So a lot of the big attacks can start from a very simple way. So depending on the size of your company, you want to, for instance, um, make sure that your employees are trained, make sure they know what your procedures are. Um, And then the other thing that you can do, depending um, on, you know, what kind of company you are, if you're large enough, is also what we, what my my company can do is we go in and we can actually check on the internet. We have dark web capabilities to actually go in and take a look what's being said about your company. Um, is there chatter about a potential attack? Are you on the list? Um, if there's a cancel culture type thing or um, reputation issue, we can go find where the attack is coming from. So there are a lot of capabilities that people don't necessarily think of, which can be very helpful. And sometimes folks assume it's a cancel culture thing and it may actually be corporate espionage where it's one of your competitors who's putting out bad information and doing it under the guise of being some um, class of of customers that's upset with what you're doing. And it may not be that at all. It may be actually a competitor just trying to put you out of business or trying to get a, you know, some sort of advantage over you. So a lot of ways you can use the the cyber arena to get information, which can be very helpful uh, to businesses in a lot of ways. And, you know, looking at your, you know, share a little bit of your background. Um, Because I don't want to gloss over it because you have done so much. Um, And I think, you know, sometimes we wonder, gee, you know, in business today, I I have this expression, you know, when we were little, we grew, you know, we wanted to be blank when we grew up, Mm -hmm. you know, doctor, lawyer, et cetera, whatever it was, um, you know, teacher or this or that. And now we have fields out there that are almost unimaginable for, you know, at somebody in my age bracket, mm-hmm. um, you, um, you have really navigated, you've been on the cutting edge so much in your career. How have you navigated that? And how, what is some of like the, the interesting, it's, it's always about making decisions, mm-hmm. right? Right. And when this, everything's so new, I'm so curious about how you navigated and you came to your decisions. I, a lot of it has to do with I learned um, pretty early on to be open to opportunities, not to be closed minded and think this is what I want to do and I don't want to think about anything else. Um, I started out at a big law firm um, and then became a federal prosecutor. That was my goal was to be a lawyer. And then once I got into law school, I realized I wanted to be a prosecutor and I really didn't think beyond that. And then a great opportunity came along and I actually turned it down, wouldn't even go talk to them the first time, which was um, to interview with Dean Witter, which became Morgan Stanley while I was there. And then I have a, he's still one of my closest friends. And he said a year later, he said, they're looking for somebody with trial experience again. And he said, at that point we had gone through, we were on our third U.S. attorney within a matter of months. And so it was a bit chaotic in the office. And, and my friend said, you know, I'm going to basically pester you until you go talk to these people. And I went over and it turned and I said to them, I don't know anything about securities law. And I figured they'd say, well, we we can't use you then. We're securities firm. How can we have you if you don't know anything about securities law? And their answer was, we'll teach you. It'll take you six months to understand it. But we like the fact that you have other experiences and that that experience can be very helpful to our business. So I wound up taking the job, which was a fabulous job. and um, and I wound up also in the process, the woman who handled the financial crime issues 
wound up getting Lyme disease. So some of it is just luck. And I wound up then also, they started looking at anti-money laundering regulations for the securities industry. So I, I became the representative for Dean Witter in a, an industry group that would meet with FinCEN, which is the agency that oversees um, the reporting requirements. And so I, wound, I was on the the, basically the entry level when they first started talking about all this stuff. So I've been involved in the anti-money laundering field almost since the get-go, certainly for the securities industry. Um, so it just, again, was being open to these opportunities to take on these, these um, issues that sometimes the, the anti-money laundering wasn't a big deal until after 9-11. So before then, people really didn't care about it, but I thought it was interesting. Um, and then I went to Citigroup after... Um, uh, Dean Witter, Morgan Stanley, and there I started in the next day, I started at Citicorp and it became Citigroup the following day. <laughs> um, that's like, amazing how business happens, right? Oh my God. And again, you, you have to, and that's something I learned, you just have to roll with it. And I, I got tons of experience because the, the, the units kept changing. So I wound up in different positions. Um, I at one point ran internal investigations. Um, another point I was on the corporate level on in the anti-money laundering area, dealing with the entire world related to uh, what Citigroup had under its umbrella for anti-money laundering issues and financial crime issues. So I, I learned a lot, but then I I left there, I was getting married. I, I didn't intend to stop working at a firm, you know, but I took a package because I knew I had the wedding coming up and all. Right. And my son was born nine months later and he was diagnosed on the autistic spectrum. And that was really the change. And that was when um, I, he had 40 hours a week of therapy at a year old. So my, my career changed. And again, now I had to be open to different types of opportunities that gave it's me more different decision-making. It's based, it it's right. Yeah. It's based on values right. and, and it doesn't mean we walk away from opportunity. Very mm -hmm. often we end up stepping into opportunity. It's just that's looking right. differently. That's right. Well, that's how I wound up doing the, uh, uh, I, I started, he was around 10 when I started doing some of the TV stuff. And for, I still do some media commentary as a legal expert. Um, for a while, I did a lot of it. And uh, it, it was something that somebody said, hey, you know, they're looking for somebody for a, for a web show. And I went in and it wasn't a paying gig. And, I, and they liked me and they then brought me on to the network. And then other networks saw me and brought me on. And one thing kind of led to the other. And now I, well, I've been on almost every, I think every station except CNN and not any reason for CNN, it just hasn't worked out timing wise. We tried a few times, it just didn't work out. So, um, but every other station, um, pretty much Fox News, MSNBC, NBC, CBS, ABC, Voice of America, even TV in Germany and in, um, I think it was Saudi Arabia and Israel as well. So, um, so I've gotten uh, quite a lot of uh, airtime over the years on that stuff. Again, just and now you're on her success story today. Absolutely. <laughs> Anything better. <laughs> this is what, um, so it's, it, it does, it just being open to things. That's really what it is. And, and, uh, you know, so when these folks came and they said, Hey, we have this company, we do these, um, cyber investigations. And then we put our heads together and came up with ways that my knowledge and their knowledge could create new offerings um, that really could help people, which, which is pretty exciting to be able to do. And, you know, I, I love how you share, you put your heads together and, sit mm -hmm. and, you got, and to see what you could create. Right. And I truly think so often we're so busy mm -hmm. running forward, going from place to place that we forget to come together with a group of smart, mm -hmm. mute, people you like mm -hmm. and brainstorm and put your heads together to see what you can create because it's an amazing things that flourish out of things that we never saw what we could have done. Mm -hmm. That's there's, right. There's so often we don't see what we don't see if we're not willing mm -hmm. to open our eyes to it because we're so busy just trudging or running forward. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we have to be willing to learn um, no matter what our age and no matter what our position. And I think that's what keeps us sharp 
learning new areas. It's one of the things I've always liked about being a lawyer is that you know, you, you get thrown into a situation and you become a little mini expert on whatever it is that's going on. And because um, that's your job and and to take that and take that to the next level and, and really be willing to learn new areas um, like the cybersecurity area and to be able to figure out how can my knowledge that I have from my life experience and my career come up with new offerings, come up with new things that can help folks. And um, it's, it, it's, and, and it's interesting because you also in the process, many times you meet new people and have new experiences. And again, it all, it all works together to make life so much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how did you end up becoming a professor, so to speak? Where did that come in? <laughs> That, believe it or not, also relates back essentially to when my son was born and diagnosed. Um, I went to Fordham Law School. I had um, stayed very involved with the school. And when I realized that I was going to have to take some time from work because I had to focus on him at that point, um, the, some of my friends at the school talked to me, including the dean, Dean John Furick, who's one of my closest friends. And he said, we don't want you to lose touch with your career. Um, and they suggested that I start teaching. So I started teaching. My son is now 20. He's doing terrifically, by the way. He's in college. He goes to concerts. So you'd never know he had these issues. Um, but he, uh, he was a baby. And I started teaching. And my mother would actually come to the school with me, with him, in the stroller. And they would play in the cafeteria. So I was close by because he used to have terrible meltdowns and things. He was, he was quite severe when he was little. And so this way, I was always close by if something happened to be able to handle it. Um, and uh, I, I taught there for probably about 12 years, something along that line, and maybe even longer. And then Columbia heard about my class and um, asked if I would start to teach it there. It was actually the first class on anti-money laundering compliance issues in the country. There are a few of them now um, in different schools, but that was the very first one. So, uh, so then I, I took the class up to Columbia and I teach that. And I also teach a class, um, a, what they call a capstone project. Um, where the students do a group project and that usually is on cryptocurrency. So in the spring, it'll be on cryptocurrency and law enforcement issues. So how they can help law enforcement, how crypto gets used in criminal activity um, and uh, it should be a great project. Uh, I'm looking forward to that in the spring as well. <laughs> that sounds fascinating. And that, that you know, for all I know, I, I'm, I will always say my series are based so much on, you know, from my heart and my head, Mm -hmm. But I'm interested in what I care about. And um, I I'm, I'm, was recently at a dinner table with a bunch of extended family and all the young people. That's, that was their conversation of the evening. And I'm like leaning in and my husband's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, they're fascinating. I was mm -hmm. like, look at these, you know, um, and what we could learn from our younger generations. That's right. I, I love working uh, with the students and the the project class, the capstone, especially you get to know the students really well. Um, it's a smaller class and it's it's very interactive and um, and you really get to know what's going on in their lives. And, and I thoroughly enjoy that. I enjoy the other class as well, the anti money laundering class. Um, but um, there sometimes you don't get to know them as well. It's easier for them to sit and listen in class and not really participate as much. And you don't have a reason necessarily to know what's going on day to day, but um, the other class, you really get to know them. And I have students, especially at Columbia, it's, it's students from all over the world in that class. So it's fascinating to learn about their, their cultures and how they live where they are and, and what kind of roles they have. They all have been working for a few years, most of them before they come to these classes at Columbia. So um, it's, nice. it's interesting, yeah. So um, Anne-Marie, in this amazing journey as you've built a career and navigated it, it, navigated all the twists and turns and now, now you are um, truly doing something, you know, kind of working for yourself in a smaller organization with partners, et cetera. What has surprised you most in this journey? What have been some of the surprises that have come your way? Uh, how much we can handle. 
That I think <laughs> <Touché. is a> <laughs> if anyone had told me um, as a young lawyer what would happen down the road, um, I would have said, no, I, I wouldn't be able to. But with my son's diagnosis and, um, you know, I have my mother's 87 and some of the issues there, it's just been in and out of the hospital at times. And it's amazing the broad shoulders that um, somebody like you and me can have um, and we can handle much more than than we think and I think that's one of the things that I've certainly been most surprised at and and I've learned over the years you just kind of take a deep breath and you just keep going and see what is around the corner and um, hopefully it's a good opportunity and you just keep going and if it's not you try to make it into a good opportunity um, part of it is is not um, you can't, you can't focus on the bad. You can't focus on the, the unfairness that you come across. I mean, I certainly have had my share in, in different roles that I've had over the years where, you know, you, you don't always feel like you get necessarily what you deserve. Um, and, but you can't focus on that stuff. You have to just keep going and, and try to do what's best and, and, um, do what you feel good about. I, I agree wholeheartedly. And um, there, it's so easy to focus on the bad or to focus on the negative, um, especially this past year and a half, you know, with, with a lot of twists. Yet we all know, or hopefully most of us know, what we focus on is what we attract. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and again, you have to be open. So, you know, and, and try to figure out what's I, I try to figure out what's what's going on in the world today. How can I help? How can I get involved? And so, you know, I saw a need with the with the crypt, with the crypto space, with the um, cybersecurity space. That these are areas that are up and coming. These are areas where there is a lot of um, new technology. There are new issues that are coming that people have to deal with. And there are ways that you can use these technologies to help. So somebody gets defrauded um, um, out of money, you can use these technologies to help find the money, to help find fraudsters, to help find out what people are saying, to help keep people safe. But we've had situations where um, you know, they, they go into the dark web. One, we had a case where they go into the dark web and they found someone, a high net worth individual, the uh, schedule for his grandchild's school bus and you know oh, pretty my, frightening. Heart, my heart just yeah. took, took a pause yes pretty frightening and but we were able to get that information before anything happened and obviously then actions could be taken to make sure that nothing happened so there you know and that those are the kinds of things that you say to yourself this is something it's where you can make a, a difference you can actually do something that's useful um that people and might not have thought of before Right. And, and it's so important, I think, when we put our heads on the pillows at the night, at every evening, is to know we've done something that's made a difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one of the things, the other things I admire about you, so Anne-Marie, is you have sprinkled in through our conversation the relationships you've kept and continue to keep through the years. And, you know, listeners, I'm not sure if you're following it, but I, I have a huge huge pet peeve about relationships, connections, our net, our net works that work for us. And it's, it's touching base with your friends, your previous colleagues, your, your kids, teachers, your old professors, you know, you're just keep, you keep peppering in people, people, people. And it seems to have such an impact on the career and the journey you've built. It really does because you get good advice. These are folks who they have your best interest at heart. Doesn't mean you always do what they tell you. I've gotten lots of advice I haven't listened to. Maybe I should have listened to more of it. But um, you, it's very important. It's it's important also when you when you face those challenges in life, like I did when my son was diagnosed, and we were also his father and I were going through a bitter divorce. Um, which went on actually on and off for 18 years, the custody battle. Mm -hmm. And to have those people there that will support you, that will just be there for you when you go through these, these downtimes. And there are always going to be downturns. And it may be that you lose a job. It may be a family situation, a health issue. And to have people that you can turn to that 
just want to help. And, and sometimes it's just having them to talk to or just knowing that they're there supporting you um, is very, very important. And, um, and I always I try to teach my students as well to, to network. Sometimes some of these connections, they can come in handy decades later, decades. And, and it, it's, I, I certainly, I am very grateful to have the people in my life that I do. Um, and many of them for many, many decades. Emory, I can't thank you enough. I know how busy your schedule is for joining us here today on Her Success Story. How can our listeners find out more and follow you? Well, um, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I also have a website. Um, it's clovisquantum.com. That's C-L-O-V-I-S quantum.com. And, um, uh, else? and um, you can also email me, Marie at clovisquantum.com. So... But thank you so much, Ivy, for having me. This was an absolute pleasure. And, um, and I think it's a wonderful thing that you're doing these podcasts that are uh, very enlightening and um, really wonderful issues that you're bringing up. Thank you. Thank you. And listeners, remember to hit subscribe. We come into your inbox, your podcast app, or your favorite whatever um, every Monday morning with great new interviews like today and other and various it, uh, podcast on content where I just share with you what some of the things I've learned as a 25 year old business owner plus plus but we're not going to go there <laughs> ladies and gentlemen <laughs> also how I end every show for those new listeners is take a moment if you've tuned in take a moment and think about what did you take away from listening to Anne Marie and myself's conversation jot that down into the show notes and then do yourself a favor and give yourself a gift. Put down what you're going to do, what you're going to implement with that piece of knowledge. As we dedicate time of learning and developing, which is so important, know to do that and implement. Thank you and see you next week on Her Success Story.